Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we have the meta snapshot for patch 14.6b. There was a small patch last week. It didn't really change too many things up. It was mainly to fix a bunch of bugs. But because of that, we are going to be updating this meta snapshot. So right now, the best comps are reroll comps. Aphelios, Senna, and Bard are going to be the main three to go for. Fast nining or playing for five costs is also extremely good right now. All those units are very solid and you could pretty much put whatever items on them. We're going to get more into items later. We're going to cover how to play every single comp, how to level them, what units to go for, what items to build, what augments to go for, things like that. But in the A tier, we have our first four cost comp, which is Ghostly Four Cost. This is probably my favorite comp right now, or at least my most played. I think it's very easy to play and relatively uncontested. Yone reroll is going to be another reroll comp to choose. Kog'Maw reroll, Duelist reroll, also Dryad reroll. Lilia Invoker is going to be a four cost comp. It's okay to kind of like top four with and like eventually fast nine with if you want to try to win the game. Arcanist Warden, decent, Mythic Bard, different type of Bard comp. Bard's still very good despite his nerfs though. And then lastly, we have Elune Invoker reroll. After that, we have Built Different, Lux, Ink Shadow Kaisa, Storyweaver, and Cossacks. They're pretty situational, there are times for them, but right now it's just a reroll meta. Built Difference typically like a 4 cost comp, and right now 4 costs are just a bit weaker than everything else. But let's get into the first comp, which is going to be Aphelios reroll. This comp revolves around Faded, with Thresh and Aphelios being the main two. You want to get to level 7 as safely as possible, and then stabilize with Aphelios 2 star and Thresh 2 star. Then level up, try to find Set as like your late game. And then you could also secondary carry your Ash. Four items on Aphelios, honestly, a lot of them work. As long as you have like an Infinity Edge and two other damage items, you're good to go. But we could take a look at the data to check out even more builds you could kind of choose with Aphelios. So what I do, I go to teamfight.lol, click on Champions. Then I go to Aphelios. And here we can see that Rageblade, IE, and Giant Slayer are some of the more common items, but some of the underrated items and very high performing is going to be the Runons, Red Buff, and the Death Blade. So Runons is actually an incredibly good item right now. I actually don't know why a lot of more people are not building it. On a lot of different champions, it's like the best item. Like Aurelia, it's extremely good. She averages like a 3.91 and Runons is like a 3.43. It's like the best item. Pretty much for a lot of backline AD carries right now, Runons is like highly underrated. So if you're ever in the situation where you're wind streaking really hard and your last pick on carousel and everyone takes the offensive item components everyone always takes swords bows rods things like that don't be afraid of taking a negatron cloak when you're going for aphelios or aurelia and maybe you get the bow later on to finish off the runon's hurricane because it's extremely powerful even on aphelios is it the best item as well yeah it's looking like 4.18 is the best item Obviously, like, data has a lot of different implications to it, but you could see that there are a lot of different item options you could go for. But in general, I like having, like, Infinity Edge and then two other damage items. If I have a Jeweled Lotus augment, then I like going, like, for Giant Slayer. You could even do, like, a Hextech Gunblade. A lot of builds work with Aphelios. I'm pretty sure you just want to, like, slam most of your items just to get a little bit more value out of them instead of going for perfect items. I'll let you know which comps need perfect items, which comps don't. Aphelios, you've got a lot of different options, though. After that, secondary carry Ash, go for set and Udyr late game. Any tank items on Thresh will do. The next comp up we have is the Shenna comp. It's Senna and Shen. And this is going to be with six Ghostly. So six Ghostly is kind of taking the world over by storm. And the most popular variation of it, at least that I've seen, is going to be the Senna reroll. And you pretty much just go for Senna 3, Shen 3, play a bunch of ghostly units, and then she just kills a lot of different stuff. All you really need on Senna is some armor penetration and then random attack damage items. And with ghostly, I like Hexset Gunblade a lot. Uh, when I'm playing Kaisa, which we'll get into later, I like Gunblade. When you're doing Senna, Gunblade's pretty decent too. But you really just play all the ghostly units. That's really all you have to do. Throw an Ink Shadow and then put the Ink Shadow item on like whoever fits it best because it's going to be different each game. Let's take a look at them right now. So Protection and Vitality, I mainly just put that on my tanks. In the back line, Bombardment's really good. Fury's really good. Uh, Toxin, I like a lot too. And then on Tattoo of Force, I normally put this on one of my five cost units. But any frontliner could do because it's just like a nice little stun. But all of them are usable. You just take what you can get because you don't get to choose which one shows up. But obviously, like one of the offensive items is going to be a bit better. And apparently, Tattoo of Protection is just the best one. 
But since this is a two cost reroll comp, you want to get to level six with as much gold as possible. This typically happens on stage three, two or three, five. Stabilize a bit once you hit level six, get at least Senna two, if not Shen two and Senna two. Econ back up and then roll down to 50 every single turn doing what's called a slow roll. After you hit level up, add in more ghostly units and then that's the comp. Next one up we have is fast nine and five cost. So one important note with fast nining is that if you look at the comps up here, like literally you play any of these comps, you can fast nine. Because let's say you're playing Aphelios reroll, but you notice that you have a two star Aphelios and you're pretty high health, but you don't have additional copies of Aphelios. You could just pivot out of the Aphelios comp and just not reroll it. Go for fast nine. Maybe someone's contesting you. I had a game earlier where every comp that I could possibly go for was contested. I built a bunch of melee carry items such as like Bloodthirster, Handed Justice, things like that. But someone was going for Yone, someone was going Duelist, someone was going Gnar. Literally all my options were taken and then I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna fast nine. So that's what I did. I got a two-star Wukong, threw all the items on Wukong, and he just carried the game 1v9. That's one of the examples of the power of Fast 9, but pretty much you're just playing the game as normal, and then if you're healthy, if you have a lot of gold, maybe it's a Econ Augment, maybe you have an Econ Portal, such as like Gold Subscription, I think it's called. Going Fast 9 is going to be incredibly, incredibly powerful for you. And here are some of the options. The best news about this is that you could itemize anyone you hit. So whoever you two-star first, that's the person you're going to use as your carry. So if it's Wukong, blue buff, and some sort of healing item is going to be best on him. Azir, Shoujin is incredibly good. Hui, I'd say Hui is more of like a supportish unit. You just want to use her as a Morello bot. So just put a red buff or Morello on her and then a Shoujin so she casts more. And then for Aurelia, uh, just use Aurelia items, attack speed, attack damage, things like that. Obviously, you can't do fast nine every single game. So you really have to pick and choose which ones. Uh, obviously, like if you have a bunch of econ augments, lean into it. But typically... You go for this if you're like contested or if you're just like getting great matchups and you're like winning every round for some reason even though you didn't spend that much on your board or maybe you just high rolled hit everything and that's why you're high health uh, but lots of other different item recommendations down here definitely takes a bit more skill to play but definitely well worth the reward oh another thing is that fortune's really good to getting into this too because uh, you could just get such a big economy from it and then just blow everyone up but story weaver bard Ah, this is a classic reroll comp of the patch right now. A lot of people are playing it, but it's getting a little less popular since the nerfs. You pretty much want to go for a double rage blade, hextech gunblade every single time. So if you ever get like Pandora's items as one of your augments, it's decent for this comp if you don't have the items already. Obviously, the best time to go for this is if you have the items without needing the Pandora's, but obviously. That's not always the case, but this is one of the few comps where I'm going to say items really, really, really do matter. So for the Aphelios, like if you have Giant Slayer, Hextech, Gunblade, and a Deathblade, like who cares, right? You don't need the items listed here. But with this Bard guy, you really, really, really need Double Rage Blade, Hextech, Gunblade. Like there's almost no substitute for it. You just look at the data. No other item combination kind of comes close to this. And then after that, you just itemize your Tom Kench. Luckily, Tom Kench can kind of use anything. Just throw whatever tank items that you kind of have. Uh, but to play this comp, you want to get to level 7 as fast as possible. Do the whole, like, stabilization thing at 3-5 or 4-1. Econ back up, then roll for Bard and Tom Kench 3 later on. Now we're on into the A tiers. My favorite comp right now, 4 cost Ghostly. Lots of different options here. I prefer the Kaisa variant the most, but there's a lot of different things you could kind of do with this comp. So... The final comp generally looks something like this. You could also go for four ghostly instead of six ghostly. I don't know why it says three cost ghostly there. Let's uh, let's delete that, change it to four cost ghostly. And then I like having Kaisa being like the main damage dealer. She kind of allows you to snowball the ghostly specters or whatever you want to call them uh, because she has high single target damage. But your late game kind of looks something like this. Three ink shadow with the Udir. Udir is the biggest power spike imaginable. Uh, as like some of the legendary units, but you could play a bunch of other ones. You could play Set, you could play Zaya. Zaya gives you Trick Shot, which is pretty nice. Um, Set's pretty good just because he's like a generic good unit. And then sometimes you could also play Wukong. Those are like the legendaries I'm generally looking for. And typically when I get them, I drop down to four Ghostly. But before you get there, before you get any of this, what you can do in your like mid game is kind of use a bunch of different flex tanks. Ghostly is funny because they got a lot of good units with like a lot of good tank options. So we have Aatrox, that's a Bruiser. We have Shen, that's a Behemoth. We have Alawi, that's a Warden. So what does that mean? That means we could play any of the four cost tanks. So that's going to be Orn, Nautilus, 
or Silas. So getting these to two star at stage four, when you do like a fast eight, very, very easy to do because you don't care which one you get. Any one of them will do, and then you just throw your tank items on them and they'll carry you through a lot of stage four and even early stage five. Then later on, once you get the legendaries, obviously put them in, they do a bit more. But even with like a Kai'Sa one star, you could top four. Another thing that's important about this comp, or not important, I should say, are the items. So I like having a lot of tank items on them, you really need an Ionic Spark because Ghostly, the tooltip doesn't say it, but it deals magic damage. So that's why people build Ionic Spark despite like main carrying Kai'Sa. But I like stacking a lot of the random tanks that we kind of mentioned before, like Orn, Nautilus, Silas, things like that. Uh, after that for Kai'Sa, she could literally use any attack damage items. Uh, Infinity Edge is very important, but literally like Giant Slayer can work, like even Rage Blade can work, Hextech Gunblade can work, Last Whisper can work. Literally, like, any damage item or generic attack damage or attack speed item will work on Kai'Sa. Like, obviously, some items are slightly better than others, but just slam whatever items you get. Do not stress out over it. Just make sure that you have an Ionic Spark and a lot of tank items for your team. Morgana, you just make her be a Morello bot. Kane, if you get a bunch of melee bruiser items, you could itemize him. I personally don't really like Kane that much, but a lot of people are playing him. But I definitely prefer investing in my Kai'Sa more than my Kane and Morgana. Overall, very good comp to kind of like top four, top three would. If you hit the legendaries, you could win the game, but just a very solid comp. Obviously, if you get a good Ink Shadow item, drop it on Kai'Sa if it's a damage item. If it's, But it's pretty much like the most consistent four comp right now. And if you ever want to get more info on all these different comps, head on over to the website bunnymuffins.lol slash meta, where I update the meta snapshot every single week. And if you do check out the website, it is often updated like the night before I post these videos. So... If you're a frequent checker, you might get a little bit of an advantage over other people. But very solid comp overall. The best four cost comp right now, and there really aren't too many. Next comp up, we have Umbral, Yone, and Alune. So we have Umbral, and then a bunch of complementary traits. Yone is going to be the main focus, though. So for Yone, I think he's another one of those champions where the items you put on him don't really matter. You just want Titan's Resolve, and then two random items, like a healing item and some damage item. That'll do. So in this situation, we have Titan's Resolve and then Rage Blade as a damage item and then Hand of Justice as a healing item. I do prefer the Hand of Justice over the Bloodthirster because uh, Reapers get critical strike chance on their ability and, and Hand of Justice gives you more critical strike chance. So I much prefer it to the Bloodthirster, but uh, both are very good. I don't discriminate between them. Whichever one I have, I build it and then I call it a day. One augment that's incredibly good with this comp is Gargantuan Resolve. That's the one that lets your Titans Resolve stack to 40 stacks. Because really, he's just like a stacking champion. After that, you can focus on either Kane or Alune. Uh, it really depends if you're going for Alune 3 star or not. Sometimes you 3 star her, sometimes you don't. Obviously, in the games where she's only 2 star, build Kane items. If she is 3 star, build Alune items. That's really all there is to it. You kind of notice early on in the game, like whether you're going to get her or not, whether you have enough gold to pursue both of them or not. Uh, but just flex a little bit, see which ones kind of pop up in your shop. Morgana carries all the support items. You could also drop a Morello on her if you don't have a Loon 3 star. She's a great Morello holder. But yeah, just a pretty standard reroll comp, very solid. Uh, next one up we have is Kogma reroll. This is going to be a one cost reroll, the first one we've seen so far. Kogma just takes blue buff plus two damage items or like a healing item like Hextech Gunblade. The two damage items you pick don't really matter. The only important item is going to be the blue buff. Uh, you could do something like red buff. You could do something like Nashers. I've even seen Rage Blade, but like I prefer having like some sort of ability power and the Hextech Gunblade, but Giant Slayer works. I've never tried it myself, but I'm sure even Guard Breaker works, you know? Uh, but like Jeweled Gauntlet, things like that. Like, again, you could check out the data, go to teamfight.lol, go to stats, champions, type in Kog'Maw, and then you see just like a huge list of like possible items you could build with their like win rates and things like that. And also see like which traits do the best with it too. Pretty interesting stuff. But to do one cost reroll, just follow like the leveling patterns listed out in the leveling guide on the website. Uh, just click leveling, scroll all the way down to one cost reroll. And then you have like very detailed instructions here if you need to reference it later on. But going back into the comps, we have Duelist reroll, Tristana and Volibear carry, and then you cap off with like Lee Sin and Aurelia. What I like about this comp a lot is that you have a lot of different carry options. You could do Volibear 3, Tristana 3, 
And then, let's say you don't hit one of them, you could complement it with a Lee Sin 2-star, which is pretty reliable to hit. And then in the late game, even like a 1-star Aurelia does so much work. I find that my 1-star Aurelia actually outdamages my 3-star Tristana. I've seen that happen a ton. Aurelia with good items is just absolutely bonkers right now. Uh, I think my favorite item on her is going to be Red Buff, but you could use all sorts of different items. They're really not that important for this comp. In the late game, you could also itemize your Wukong. He gives attack speed from his heavenly buff, I believe, but Wukong is just a great standalone unit. You could kind of play him in every comp and just use him to kind of win with. So this comp is both great in the early and mid game and also has some opportunities to cap out in the late game with a bunch of different legendary units. That's why it's a very solid comp right now, but just do a three cost reroll, level seven, go there on stage three, five or four, one, stabilize a bit, econ back up and then roll down again. Lilia Invoker is going to be the next build. This is going to be a four cost build. Uh, this build is the build you go when you can't hit any AP rerolls and you're like, you know what, Annie is OP, let me play Annie. And then the only carry option you have with Annie is like going Lilia. So that's kind of what you do with this comp. You could use it to fast 9 with because no one buys Lilia, so you always hit her for free. Annie 1 star stabilizes super hard during stage 3. Annie 2 star stabilizes super hard during like stage 4 and 5. She might be the best tank unit right now. And she really doesn't need much to get going, whereas like the other tanks, you probably want like their complementary synergy. Since Annie is a fortune invoker, by default, they have to make her more tanky. That's like the way TFT works. If her traits don't make her tanky, they just boost up her stats to make her equal to the other units. So uh, that's why she's kind of like the tankiest unit right now, I think at least. But super solid. Just have some form of mana regeneration on your Lilia, Blue Buff, or Spear of Shojin. Doesn't really matter. Then just build some AP items and like Hexac Gunblade's really good in this set because there's a lot of backline damage like Aloon shoots your backline, Udyr runs to your backline and starts hitting them. There's a lot of random crap like Hui's thing. His ability just like hits a lot of stuff I find. But because things like that exist, having some form of healing in your backline is always pretty solid. And then Hexac Gunblade has the added bonus of healing up your tanks or whoever's low which is nice too. Next one up we have is Dryad Reroll. A couple different ways to play this. So we have the version here where we have Nar and Kindred 2-star, uh, but there's a different version with Senna. You could kind of do like a Senna, Jax, and Aatrox, but we'll cover this version first. So Nar, his build is going to be very similar to his old build, which is going to be Bloodthirster, Titans, plus one other item. Bloodthirster and Titans, I'd say, are like pretty mandatory. I wouldn't really swap anything out for them. Last item, though, could be kind of a bunch of different things, preferably some sort of like frontline item. Another thing that's really good in this comp is going for some of the Radiant item or like Orn item augments. If you ever get like a Death's Defiance on Gnar, it's just like a Bloodthirster that's put on crack, so it's just incredibly strong. But obviously, like Radiant items are even stronger, so definitely go for those. Uh, cap out with like for Dryad, you could add a bunch of Reapers if Kindred's doing stuff, but pretty much what you do, you flex between Kindred and Senna as a secondary carry. So I'm going to show you that version right now. You take out all the Reapers, and then instead you add in some Ink Shadow. So you add in Jax uh, for Warden, you add in Aatrox for Bruiser and Ink Shadow, and then lastly you drop in Senna, and then you could also put in Caitlyn. Uh, this gives you some Ghostly with the Aatrox, and also gives you Sniper for your Senna. So through here, you just throw a bunch of attack speed, attack damage items on Kai'Sa, whatever, it doesn't really matter what you put on her. And then later on, add in Orn, add in another Dryad, where's Kindred, let's put her back in. And then you're gonna be good to go, and then cap out with Azir in the late game. Very, very strong comp. Sometimes you're hitting a bunch of Senna's instead of hitting a bunch of Kindred, so this is a different option to consider. You could also play this comp to grief all the Senna players, I love doing that personally because it's a very strong comp and you could really screw someone over and get like a free plus one to your placement, so always keep that in mind. Next comp up we have is Arcanist Warden. Uh, I don't really play this comp that much. I play Syndra more so in Faded, but it's an okay comp because Lissandra, I think she's like one of the best five cost units as like a anti-carry. Whenever I have a really strong unit, they always get destroyed by Lissandra. She's just that good. Um, so I think that's how they're kind of semi-viable right now. It's because she just completely wrecks everything, and if you get her early, you get a ton of items, and then you can kind of snowball the game. But right now, I think Arcanists are a bit weaker than most other comps. Um, even like the Faded Syndra build, I, I don't really even like that one that much. It's like, okay, but you really win out when you get the Legendaries, not so much the Syndra. Next comp up we have is Mythic Bard Reroll. This one's going to be a three cost reroll comp. It's just a different version of the Bard and Tom Kench build, but you just go deep into Mythic, itemize Lilia. So if you ever get like a ton of Mythic augments, go for this build instead of the other one. 
Uh, next comp up we have is Alun Invoker. If for some reason you're going for Alun and then you don't get any Yones, go for the Invoker build instead. Uh, pretty decent comp overall, just do a 3 cost reroll. Those are the bulk of the major comps, like in the B tier, I guess we'll go over build different because this one is one of the new comps right now and a lot of people always love playing this type of build, uh, but just go for 4 costs. 4 costs are completely OP right but just go for 4 costs. 4 costs are really good for build different right now because they don't really share many synergies. The only ones that do are Morgana and Kane. But luckily, Morgana is a great support unit. And then all the backliners, they don't really share any synergies. The frontliners don't, like Annie, Orn, and Silas, all very good. And then you just run multiple copies of the same unit of whatever you're like hitting. So I think Annie, again, is the best like 4 cost tank. So itemize her, play 2 Annies if you can. And then for the backline, Kaisa might be the best carry right now. Uh, followed by Ash, and then if you have AP items, you have to use Syndra. Unfortunately, you cannot use Lilia because she gives you Invoker with Annie. Uh, so if you do go AP, like focus on Syndra, not the Lilia. But this is what the comp kind of looks like. Nothing too complicated there. Um, next build up we have is Lux reroll. Kind of garbage right now. I think they're being like anti bunnies right now because Lux throws some spirit bunnies. But according to the data, like this comp just isn't hitting that hard. Like, you look at Lux, you look at average 3-star placement is 4.33, which might seem good because the average placements right now on this data set is 4.46, but if you look at all the 2 costs, like, wow, pretty bad stuff. She's all the way down here. Ironically, Janna is a 4.58, but I think she's actually pretty solid. I've tried the comp before, it's not bad, like maybe we'll add the Janna comp next week. It's quite situational. The next comp up we have is Story Weaver reroll. This comp's okay, if you get a ton of Sivers and Garens at the start, uh, maybe you get one of the Story Weaver augments, what's it called again? The one that like buffs up your Kale a bunch. This comp is incredibly good with that. Just do a one cost reroll pattern that we talked about earlier, get them to 3 star, level up, throw in more Story Weavers. Uh, what I really like to play this comp in is the portal which gives you tailored champions. I think it's called Champion Conference because you're able to get Aurelia for free and that just super turbo spikes your comp so it's really nice and you also get like Galio for free if you wanted to. Um, so pretty good option there. Ink Shadow Kaisa, don't play this. Kaisa's only good in the Ghostly build right now. She's a really good complementary unit. You could even play Ink Shadow with Story Weavers. A lot of people are doing that too because you play Sivir for Trick Shot. Add in Kaisa, just use her as a carry either temporarily or permanently. Both pretty good options. Kha'Zix reroll, kind of a little whack right now. Wouldn't really touch that too much. Focus more on the S and A tier comps. They're going to be the main kings out there. But yeah, reroll meta right now. It, like, I've, it's hard to win without getting like a ton of legendaries or getting a really solid reroll comp. If you're doing four costs, like, it's really hard to win out. I'm not saying it's impossible, but you need to be playing like a bunch of legendaries to do so. So you might as well just like do a fast 9 because they're going to outcap you in that sense because they roll more gold at level 9. But my favorite comp right now is going to be the Ghostly 4 cost. If you ever just want to like tunnel vision a comp, this comp, I swear to God, is, is so easy right now. You, you just play 4 to 6 Ghostly, play a bunch of 4 cost tanks, and then like that's literally it. Like people bleed out before you bleed out, and then you get like 4th every single game. Like, yeah, sometimes you get a 5th, sometimes you get a 6th, but sometimes, sometimes you get a 2nd or a 3rd. Dare I say you even win a game here and there. But right now, like, I find that no one's going for Kai'Sa, at least in my games. Maybe after this video, I'm, I'm screwing myself over. Everyone's going to start playing Kai'Sa, so uh, good luck out there. But it's not even the best comp, so I don't know why people would do that. Go for the reroll comps if you're, like, seriously trying to climb. Actually, if you're seriously trying to climb, do flex, you know? Like, flex into different builds. That's going to always be the best thing to do. But that's going to be it for me today. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video. Hopefully you got a little insight into the TFT meta and ideally get a bit better every single day. But that's gonna be it for me today. I hope to release like one or two other videos this week. So definitely stay tuned for that. But don't forget to check out the website, funnymuffins.lol for more information.